if you say founding father, it brings me to the uh, nice idea of being parents. And uh, it, Andy, Rabbi Baker is also a founding father. So you would have, we would have a child of two fathers. So it is not very clear who was the mother and who is the father. But so we decided, Andy and I, that we are parents uh, for, for this wonderful program. We came to the idea when, before I left the United States, for getting, uh, becoming um, the uh, director for the Eastern European world, at that time, um, we both uh, sat together and said, what could we do, what could we invent? Something which really will last, maybe not forever, but for a very long time. And we discovered that there is an enormous need for, at that time, learning tolerance or promoting tolerance. Because tolerance is something you don't get in your genes. Uh, tolerance is something, it's a question of education. Uh, you can learn actually tolerance, you can learn how to tolerate a certain uh, phenomenon you see which you don't agree, but um, you see the point of the other person, or culture, or language, or religion, whatever it may be. And this was especially necessary in the countries who had suffered under the regime of the Soviet Union, where there was no tolerance at all. Um, and we knew that uh, the newly emerged countries will undergo uh, terrible uh, turbulences in finding their own way and identity as a new democratic state. So we, we thought um, Germany would maybe because of the Nazi time and so on and the Second World War, it would not be the best country to, as, a, as a learning ground. Uh, there would be too many prejudices and difficulties. So we thought, in the United States, um, you have a lot of discrimination, you have a lot of uh, racism, but you also have a lot of mechanisms of how to do something against it. So we thought, uh, let's do it with the American Jewish Committee in the United States. And it worked fine until today. One generation, 25 years. This is a, a, maybe one of the most crucial questions you can raise, because how can you measure processes in your brain? Yeah, you cannot look into somebody's head, fortunately. Um, so I ask myself during all these uh, decades, how to measure what we do? Uh, what does it uh, really create in the brain, in the mind of people, in their character? Uh, my answer is the other way around. What would happen if you would not do it? This is maybe the only way how to really measure it. Uh, what would happen if this program would not be in the world for the last 25 years? And if, you, if I look at the people, the personalities, who joined this program, um, they are all very talented, engaged, modern thinking Democrats. And I'm not sure whether they would be the same without this program. This is my only hope I can, if you ask me such a question, how do we measure? It is, um, just look at the people, look what they do, uh, what responsibilities they have, and, um, and this is wonderful. Well, the, the, I mean, for a German organization, you can imagine, uh, I met Rabbi Baker when I came to New York, this was in 1983. Um, and I immediately realized uh, the importance of a younger German Jewish American dialogue. We included also at that time uh, counterparts from Israel. So we had a German-Jewish-American-Israel dialogue, uh, which was uh, happening for the first time. And it still was difficult, because there were many, many uh, victims, survivors of the Holocaust, who did not want at all a talk to a German, not even to one who has no responsibility for what has happened. 
So um, I think it laid the ground, among many other activities, for a new fertile, a new fertile ground of, uh, of a new relationship between Jews and Germans. American Jews, Israel Jews, Polish Jews, German Jews. And uh, get away from the discussion, we are the victims, you are, you are the murderers. So we don't talk to each other. We both are victims of our history, of course. Yeah? Um, we are not responsibility, irresponsible for what has happened, but we are responsible that this will never happen again. And therefore it is, an, it is a remarkable friendship and cooperation. Openness and dialogue. Openness and dialogue. Dialogue about everything with everybody. People who talk to each other don't shoot to each other. Because democracy is in danger in many countries. Um, I grew up with the feeling Holocaust is behind us, the Nazi time is behind us, so we will only have it better every year. Yeah? More democratic, more wealth, more education, more participating in decision making. And this seems to be not the case. Um, so I don't want to be pessimistic like some of the discussions here, but um, to keep my optimistic um, mind uh, vivid, I would um, think that there is no alternative to dialogue.